Hey everyone, it's Hagen, back for the Precast Chalk Talk, episode three. Today, we're gonna go into engineering. I really want you to understand what we do to determine how much reinforcing is needed in the products that we make. So let's go take a look. All right, look what I found. I found Bill and David. They were on coffee break, so now I've got them pulled into a conference room where they're gonna show us and talk to us a little bit about how do you design reinforcing for a piece of pre-stressed hollow core and how do you design for reinforcing for a mildly reinforced precast beam? Okay, Dave, so I just called Vit States and I bought a beam. What do I need to give you in order to do that design? First of all, what we need is the loading that it's going to be on the element. Usually we just ask for dead load that it's all the things that are going to be on top of the beam like topping, wall loads, all the loads that we know are going to be there. And then we also need to add light load, that it's the things that maybe are going to be there, but it's not for sure, Yeah. like furniture, people. Okay, so I provide those live loads and those dead loads for you. Now, how do you go about designing the beam? So you can put those loads into your element, and then you'll get a diagram like this one. These should be for bending, and this should be for shear. Bending is like, for example, when you have a straight beam, and you put load, it's going to deflect this way. Okay. So you have to provide some kind of reinforcement to prevent that beam of breaking when you put some load. I needed a prop to try to understand this. So you're saying, if I load this, this is my beam, and if I load this, this beam's going to want to deflect. Yes. That's bending. Yes. Okay, well, what's shear then? So if I were to load this piece of concrete, much like I was trying to do with this, uh, with this, this beam that I have here, and and there, since the beam is in bending, there's also components where it's being supported here on this wall and the beam's being supported over here, that the, that the forces that are, that are affecting the load and the wall coming up are trying to basically kind of cut this beam in half, well, not in half, but really when we say shear something. So it'd, yes. be like, it'd be like that effect. Yeah, it's when the, yeah, when the section is trying to split, just like that. Okay, okay. So you have to design for both bending and for shear? Yes. Okay. So that's what you were explaining. Usually shear is worst at the end when you have the supports like this and it's trying to break the concrete and bending it's usually worst at the mid-span. Okay. So these lines are called stirrups and those are the reinforcement needed to prevent this piece of breaking for shear. And then these bars go along the length of the piece, and these bars prevent the piece of breaking for bending. Hey, David is designing how many bars, how many rebars go on the bottom to prevent and hold up the beam while it's loaded for bending, and then the stirrups he puts in and designs for shear reinforcing, so that the element when under load, it doesn't fail. We don't want that to happen. Okay, it was great to have David up here talking about rebar and precast elements as opposed to pre-stress, so Bill's gonna help us figure out how do we design when we're dealing with pre-stressing strain. Same kind of thing, I suppose, right? You gotta have the dead loads, the live loads. Is that what this represents up here? Correct. Okay. Very similar. So is there a big difference between when you design for precast versus when you're doing pre-stressing? Um, conceptually, there's not a whole lot of difference. Just the way that you get the moment capacity from the strand is different than the rebar. Okay. So uh, how do you know how much strand to put in, a, in an element? Each strand is pulled to a, f a certain force, and you need to, to put in enough force in the bottom of the piece to resist the, the load that you have. Uh -huh. Okay, so, so this is the piece of hollow core, that's the cross section. You've got the strand drawn in here. You're saying if I load this thing, it's gonna wanna deflect like this, right? Yes. And so that's why you put the strand in the bottom instead of in the top. Yeah, the strand is putting that concrete in compression well, when this isn't bending, it's wanting it to put it in tension. So the strand is, um, I, I guess it's starting in compression, so it, it gives it more strength. So as you said, you got the strand at the bottom here to deal with the bending, but how do you deal with the shear? What, what does that look like? Well, as opposed to a beam where you'll put stirrups and stuff like that in, it, in a hollow core plank, we can't do that. So we will fill the core solid in order to increase the shear capacity at the locations that it's needed, which is typically at the end or a lot of times underneath some of these high wall or point loads. So Dave, this is a load 
uh, plan for this particular building, is that right? So what, what kind of project is this? Yes, so this building is an apartment building with the first floor being precast and the floors above being wood framing. Okay. So these lines that we see here are wall loads. So all the floors from above are coming to these wall loads and then going to the precast. One, once we receive the drawings, they give us those loads here and they define dead load, live load, and snow load. And when we received these, we designed for these loads. Thanks everyone for joining me and talking with Bill and Dave. Really appreciate their help and trying to help us understand engineering, precast engineering, reinforcing, and what goes into making the decision about how much steel reinforcing to put into one of our precast elements. Next time we're going to take a look and speak with one of our project designers about the different drawings that they use that come from, our, from the customer architectural drawings, structural drawings. What's the difference in those? And then how do we use those to create our own piece tickets and shop drawings? So join me next time when we stay in engineering for a little bit to find out more about precast and how to build with precast.